Hey everyone. Uh, wanted to do another video here. I've been getting a couple of requests uh, from people who expressed interest in getting my negative prompts uh, and kind of seeing how they're set up and, and why I customize different negative prompts for different things. Um, I, and just, you know, uh, as a, a brief, uh, really the reason I do that is I didn't think that an overall massive negative prompt was always the best way to go about doing things. Um, I felt that there should be specific things that apply to different types of scenes. And so I actually had ChatGPT, I took my original uh, negative prompt and I fed it into that and said, hey, could you analyze this? And we use it as a negative prompt to say what we don't want to see in our images as we generate them. And based upon that knowledge and your analysis, could you give me um, some custom negative prompts with weighting on certain words, you know, how we, we can emphasize or de-emphasize certain words based on certain scenes. And so I gave it, you know, four or five scenes and it gave me these really nice custom negative prompts that worked really well. And then I asked it, are there any other types of negative prompts that you can think of that I should do? And it started giving me a bunch of different scenes and I thought wow this is pretty cool in the sense that yeah I mean if you're working with a scene that has a lot of mechanical things in it, it would be nice to have uh, a negative prompt for mechanical stuff and so it fed in there malfunctioning broken damaged rusted outdated obsolete poorly designed and if, you know it, it, a lot of things that you don't want to see based on that and so and, and almost all of my negative prompts have this neg mutation uh, uh, I think it's a, a textual inversion um, which is this one right here. That's the scene I had and it seems to really help out as well. But I mean you don't have to use that if you don't want. Um, so what I wanted to do in this, uh, actually something I'm gonna share with everybody here is I'm gonna go through a couple different uh, plugins that I use in this video for content and, and to help people with processes. But I created a Google Share Drive that I am uh, dropping in my entire styles CSV file. So uh, it's gonna give you access to all these negative prompts. It's gonna give you access to all the pre-made prompts that I have as well. Uh, a lot of, I have them sorted by you know, design and filters and uh, uh, scenes. I have full scenes for doing like parchment, parchment alchemy instructions and diagrams, which is a pretty cool one. And, and, you know, there's a bunch of stuff here that uh, I found useful for being able to just quickly add a style to a prompt. You know, I, I love how Stable Diffusion allows you to select it and it keeps it in the styles here and just applies it when you render it. It doesn't actually put it over here unless you want it to. And that way you can quickly switch out uh, to a new uh, character design or a new uh, photo style or whatever and, and allows you to switch quickly switch through things. Pretty fun stuff. So I dropped that into this share Google Drive along with a spreadsheet of my favorite prompts. And uh, so in the spreadsheet it has uh, the prompt, the negative prompt, the set it, the setup I used on that along with the uh, the image that I generated with it and uh, that I that I really liked. So you can look at that. I'm going to share that with everybody. I think it's a, a great resource for people to really develop their own skill and they can see how somebody else does it. I'm not saying I do everything perfectly, but if I can uh, throw out what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and help people out with that, that I, I think it's just going to help everybody as a whole. So a couple of really uh, fun uh, plugins that I use that help me get set up really quickly. Uh, one of them is this config preset. It uh, saves you a lot of time I and mean, it's got some pre-made uh, settings in there. Um, I think I used this in one of my other videos but you can add your own and I have one that's a 16 by 9 for render which uh, when you select that it automatically adjusts the sampling steps, the sampling method, width, height, uh, the batch size, batch count if you want, config scale, that kind of thing and even uh, applies the restore faces. And the one drawback is I really wished it would it would do this too if it had something where it would apply to other plugins like Tile Diffusion. So I could use it in the image to image and actually instead of having to go in here and, and click enable on this and change all these settings every single time I wanted to do an upscale, it'd be nice to have that. Maybe they'll put it in at some other point. Maybe I'll jump on their on their GitHub and make the request. But 
In the meantime, it does it does make things a little quicker in setting up for a new render. And if you go into image to image, <clears throat> there is also a separate one for image to image. Uh, and now I have this set up here, ultra sharp upscale, but it does not apply the settings to the uh, tile diffusion, which is what I was hoping it would do. But it does set up everything else, you know, for the basics that I might. But it honestly it pulls all that information from the image anyway. So take it as it is. Um, but you can add a lot of things in there, like this is for 16 by 9, but maybe I want to put in, I think I got something for portraits, so 76, 768 by 1024, you know, and, and a few adjustments there. But you can add in a lot of different things in there, which allows you to quickly switch between formats. Um, and, and that's kind of been my whole purpose, is, is how, how do I uh, um, quickly set up and uh, get to where I, I'm generating images uh, that I want to see. So uh, I'm, I have an IT background. I work in managed IT, run my own business, and I, that's just the way my brain works, is trying to find the, the quickest and most efficient way to do something that saves me time. And, you know, I think it applies across a lot of different uh, uh, areas, you know, whether it's art generation or what not. So uh, let's see what else. Uh, that's the config preset, so you can go to uh, their GitHub here. Um, I'll click it and you can see it in the in the thing here so Zion 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0055 so uh, something you know you gotta remember with, with updates make sure you're updating your or with plugins make sure you're updating them often because a lot of times they are updated almost every day you know whether it's fixing things or coming out with new features so another um, well, let's see. So I, I think in the last video in the, the uh, pixelization or generating pixel art, I talked about <clears throat> ABG, the automatic background thing, or you know the uh, background removal thing. So that was that was a good one. Um, the aspect ratio helper has been awesome. I love this one. Uh, you come over here and um, let's say you you set. Uh, so that's what this is right here. I actually have it modify. It usually has something down here as well that allows you to click a button for an aspect ratio. But I find that having this button enabled here is better. So right now it's off. But let's say I want it to be in in uh, 16 by 9 format right off the bat. Um, and I want it based off of like, like I usually I use uh, 1152 a lot. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. I just picked a number that fit and I want the whole thing to be 16 by 9 so instead of trying to calculate that out I can click here and go here and it automatically does it for me and it locks it to that so I can move this wherever I want and it keeps that 16 by 9 ratio which is incredibly helpful instead of trying to figure out oh well you know I'm at 1280 what is the uh, <clears throat> 16 by 9 ratio height on that <laughs> and and then it has this you know I think this is part of stable diffusion itself or you know the automatic 1111 interface you can swap that around and this is smart enough to know that oh he just switched it over to 9 by 16 so you know kind of vertical format and they got a lot of other little weird formats in here you know well, maybe they're standard I don't know I'm not <laughs> I never claim to be you know a professional artist but um, and it has a lock option here, so you can lock it and use this to adjust it instead of the one up here. Uh, but it seems to do that anyway when you're uh, on the aspect ratio that you want. So I think the lock is if you're using something that's not one of those preset <coughs> aspect ratios. So if you switch this off and then you switch it to, say, that, and you want to keep that, whatever that is, um, you know, and it's not one of these here, then you click the lock and it locks it to that, okay? Again, super useful. I love that because I was always, when I was working on producing images for Etsy and other things, they uh, or Printify, you know, you're working with these vendors that have these standard format, like uh, canvases or whatever, and, and you're like, I wanna make the images so they fit that, so that I'm not having to screw around with their little tool to format or try to fit your image onto their canvas. So. Uh, having this tool has been uh, very useful. So, oh, let's see, what else we got? Um, NPW. Negative prompt weight. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is actually a pretty new one. Um, so, negative prompt weight 
what it does, it takes whatever negative problem, let's say we put in my prime negative here, and, and uh, it puts that whole thing in there, so there's quite a bit of stuff. I need to go through and reformat this. I really hate the multiple parentheses when you can just put a weighted number at the end. But anyway, uh, I digress. So let's see, negative prompt way. So down here, it adds this bar. And let's say you got this negative prompt in here and it's, it's uh, let's, do a, let's do a portrait. Um, por uh, portrait, <laughs> a classical um, woman pinup art. Um, I can't remember the name of the airplane that I wanted to do that, but we'll just we'll just do a uh, uh, propaganda poster. Okay, um, I want this to be uh, taller than normal, uh, taller than it's high. <coughs> so we're gonna do a uh, let's do 768. I always start with that as the basis, and 992. Okay. Um, and maybe we'll miss, we might mess around. So I'm gonna lock it at that. Uh, we're gonna do four. Uh, I think that's fine. We're gonna restore face because this is gonna produce stuff that, uh, and, and this negative prompt is an overall one. So, we're, but we're gonna show you what the negative prompt, negative prompt weight does. So this is at a one. We'll go ahead and uh, generate that. Uh, we're just gonna do one image. Okay, and uh, yeah, we get this great little piece of pinup art um, that uh, is just a you know pretty woman, and and uh, it's in kind of a style that looks like a propaganda poster. You could fill in your own text on there and, and make it look really nice. So that's with the negative weight at you know the standard one, which would be whatever it is standard. So if I wanted to emphasize the negative weight a lot more, let's bring it up to one point. Five, re-render that. Oops. Re-render that, and it changes the image quite a bit. You know, we don't have the propaganda poster necessarily anymore. It's uh, emphasizing, and it's not even done rendering. And you're going to see that now she's like the bones stick out more, and and uh, a lot of stuff is uh, I don't know how to describe it, like overemphasized. Um, let's bring it down to almost 0.5. I guess you could type it in, right? There we go. Hit generate on that. So this de-emphasizes whatever you have in your negative prompt. So things are a little softer. Um, they may be a little more unrefined. You can kind of tell in the face and the hair. It's not quite, uh, I mean, it looks good, but you're getting a lot more chaos, which is typically what happens when you don't have a negative prompt. And you drop this all the way down to zero and see what happens. And it's basically like not having a negative prompt would be my guess. Uh, the model I'm using, the Illuminati Diffusion, is very good at doing stuff without negative prompts, but you're, you're seeing something here that, uh, doesn't look like the you know the the refinement of the original. Definitely a little bit more mutation going on here in the body, the neck. Uh, it doesn't know what to do with the poster side of things. These stars are all squirrely. So yeah, I mean, it's essentially like not having a negative prompt. So that comes in useful, like you know if you're you're working on something and for whatever reason your negative prompt just doesn't feel like it's has enough weight or maybe it's over overdoing it too much, but you don't want to sit there and screw with it, so you can kind of mess with this bar and and try to get the effect that you want. All right, so that's the negative prompt weight. Uh, we, I think in a previous one I talked about the images browser, the uh, or let's see, no, I think we talked about the uh, there's Infinite Image Browser, which is another one that I tested out, and it may be okay. I, I haven't dived into it a whole lot. But the Images Browser, this is a different one, and you actually have to go to here and do an install from URL for this one. <clears throat> there is one in the available, but they, the last I checked, they haven't been updating it very often, and there's some things broken with it that don't 
that, that make workflow very difficult, um, especially when working from uh, a phone or something like that. So uh, you'll want to install this one from there, and it gives you a lot more functionality when dealing with your your images. So it gives you the ability to kind of look through uh, this, like the standard one. You can jump to pages, refresh it, but then you can sort by date. You can sort by uh, config scale and all these other different things, which you know maybe you wanted to be able to do, or you can do a keyword search. Um, I got something in there with robots. Let's see. Yep, sure enough. There we go. We got robots. So, yeah, it gives you the, the ability to do searches on that uh, or, or other things in the whatever's in the file name. That's the file name keyword search. You can do EXIF keyword searches as well, searching for more information in the, uh, uh, the file. <clears throat> anyway, so you can kind of go through that, figure that out. Pretty, pretty nice uh, file browser that I think they do keep updated, uh, which has been nice. And you can go through and actually it has access to all these other ones. Uh, there are settings in um, the settings for this specifically. So you can kind of configure what's visible and what these other maintenance would look like. So. Anyway, pretty fun. Um, talked about pixelization. Inspiration's a, uh, a nice one. I don't have it, let's see, I do have it enabled. Uh, let's see, is it up there? I don't see it up there. I think I've uh, got it shut off. Inspiration's nice, because, but it requires that you download, there's like this, this one gigabyte file of pictures that go along with it, or you can have it go through the process of generating all the images based on the, uh, the style. And you can go through and look at different artists and how they render out. Um, and try and you can actually have it has functionality of importing that artist into your prompt uh, it's a decent one I haven't really played with this one a lot web UI state so what this does supposedly <laughs> I can I've, I'm not I haven't really used it yet is uh, it will save the state of your web interface when you exit out let's say you close it out and you come back and you know how it refreshes everything this is supposed to help keep the state of your your stable diffusion or automatic 1111 uh, interface as it was when you left it. I think it applies to only certain sections. Again, I'm not really I haven't really played with that one, uh, but something maybe to think about. So anyway, that's uh, that's all that. I'll leave the. Uh, um, the shortcut or the link to the Google Drive that I've set up so you guys can go in there and start uh, looking at that and uh, have fun guys I uh, again I don't consider myself a professional artist but this has been so much fun to uh, be able to generate what I, I remember watching another youtuber I, I don't remember her name but uh, she was talking about how artists complain about you know AI art and that's not real art and maybe it isn't maybe it is I I I don't really care, but what I liked what she said is like, I like generating pretties. I love generating beautiful pictures and uh, I like sharing that with people and I get a lot of uh, people talking to me about it and, and so this has been fun exploring that and seeing how other people react to it. So anyway, I will talk to you all later. Thanks.